Hello my little knit witches, it's me, the Knitted Anus. Unfortunately, we need to go over the Warsaw Ghetto. The Warsaw Ghetto was a ghetto in Warsaw, Poland, where the Nazis put people that they deemed Jews by their weird race science. There was like 500,000 people in there at its peak, which was 9.2 people per room, which is horrifying. And it was established in November of 1940 when Germany occupied Poland in early World War II. The way that Germany took over Warsaw was with a bombing campaign where they just did 17 bombing raids on the city three days later. Then they did 50 German planes uh, attacking the city center and 30,000 people were... When the Germans had control of Warsaw, basically they kicked a bunch of people out of the city center and they relocated a bunch of Jewish folks from the suburbs and everywhere else and put them all in one small little ghetto and it's like a few blocks, you know? This is what we're looking at here. This is like the greater area and then there's a smaller one, a uh, smaller ghetto. And then up there, see the damage from the bombing. Does that look familiar? But I want you guys to see how incremental this is. October 12th is when the government was like in Installed by Schmittler. October 26th, the Jews in the ghetto were mobilized as forced laborers to clear up all the damage from the bombing. November 23rd, all establishments needed to have the Star of David on the door. December 1st, everyone needed to have a white band on their arm. And 10 days later, no Jewish people are allowed to go on the bus. April 1st, they start erecting walls all over the city. November 15th, barbed wire was put on top and then no one was able to escape. And if you tried to escape, you would be shot on sight. See these, uh, this overpass? I wonder where they were going. Oh, that's right. They were, you know, used as forced labor and stuff. Cause they, the Germans liked um, slave labor. Yeah, here's like a little checkpoint. But yeah, so it was a very, very small area. It was 2.4% of the city metropolitan area. And they crammed 500,000 people in there. Basically, the initial plan was to just starve everyone out or just let diseases get them like typhus. But mostly it was like starvation was the plan. They actually had a name for it. They called it the hunger plan. And that was the whole plan from the start was to just starve them all out. So what they did was they lowered the calorie intake of the Palestine, I mean the, uh, the Jewish inmates of the ghetto. They lowered their calorie intake to 184, which is nuts. Like humans need 2,600 calories a day. It does sound familiar though. Yeah, see there it is, the hunger plan. They artificially created famines to starve people. Actually, the first German that was in charge here did that so bad that I think he starved out the Germans too, and then they replaced him with uh, someone else. And besides the point being there to die, um, obviously the capitalist war profiteers have to step in and they're like, ooh, slave labor, I know what to do with that. <laughs> so Tobin's and Schultz. I wonder if Austin's great grandpa knows the dude Tobin and Schultz, maybe. I don't know, you know. Maybe they're family friends. Yeah, so they did the hunger plan and they starved out 100,000 inmates while they were there. Or, you know, gave them diseases or whatever. But they basically neglected 100,000 humans until they perished. And then they started deporting them to Treblinka. You know what's interesting? Even under these horrible conditions where everyone's getting typhus and, you know, there's no medical supplies. That sounds familiar. People didn't give up. And you see them still teaching kids and, you know, like keeping their culture alive and stuff. And a group of doctors apparently even studied the effects of hunger while they were all starving and stuff. Uh, just to, I guess, get some good out of something horrible, you know? Yeah, so the deportations ended up sending 250,000 inmates to their death. For eight weeks, the deportations went from Warsaw to Treblinka, and they carried 4,000 to 7,000 people that were crying for water each trip. A hundred people stuffed per cattle car. The trains came in twice a day. The second they got off the cattle cars, they were sent to take showers, and they were stripped naked and gassed immediately. And at first, they could only do 200 at a time. And then a few weeks later, they were able to do 3,000 at a time.
in the last two weeks, 48,000 Jews were deported to their deaths to Treblinka. And then the deportation stopped for four months. And this is an interesting note that people should take into account today. The last transport with 2,200 victims from the Polish c capital included the Jewish police involved with the deportations and their families. Huh. Then on January 18th in 1943, after four months of no deportations, the Germans suddenly entered the Warsaw Ghetto intent upon further roundups. Within hours, some 600 Jews were shot and 5,000 others removed from their residences. The Germans expected no resistance, but the action was brought to a halt by hundreds of insurgents armed with handguns and Molotov cocktails. Because the Jews had been, in those four months, started smuggling in weapons. See, a group of resistance fighters had realized that all of those trains were going to their deaths. Actually, I feel like at the time they probably would have been called terrorist fighters, if you get me. Yeah, they initially fought off the Germans and they held them off for a little bit, I think for about four months. But yeah, then so April 19th, the Germans just came in and just bombed the shit out of it, leveled it, decimated it, block by block. And of course they did it on Passover too. 2,000 Waffen SS went block by block and burned the entire city down. Look at that, man. Look at the smoke. That's crazy. And let's not mince words here. To be clear, the Germans entered and burned the entire place down as retribution for them fighting back. It's like as if the Germans were like, January 18th. That was the start of everything. Ignore the three years where we had you guys locked in an open air prison. It was when you guys attacked us when we were coming to all of you that that was the real problem. Look at all the people that they All the poets and artists and educators and scientists and doctors and writers, resistance leaders, social activists, authors, microbiologist, historian. You know what, I think history is important. We need to know our history, you know? We need to know when we're seeing history repeat itself. We need to know when we're seeing something that is horrific from the past and it's like repeating itself, you know? Because we shouldn't be doing things that we did in the past, you know? Because like, I mean, guys, This is just get it's like so much i don't even know what to say anymore but like to anyone who is not speaking out right now like i mean they're counting their calories man this stuff is right now no way that you're ever going to get me to believe that these two are not the same 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 and these two are not the same. 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 What are we doing, man? Same. Everything's the same, man. You're never gonna tell me otherwise. Promise. Same. Same. Yeah, in Thailand, they have a saying, same, same. Means everything's the same. Same, same. Same, same. Same, same. Same, same. Same, same. We gotta stop this. Uh, guys, there's a big chance that we might be the bad guys.